So we're going to talk about just kind of the automation modes, first of all. Touch is really our kind of default mode for when you're starting out mixing and stuff like that. I don't write any automation unless I touch the control. And then when I let go of the control, it auto matches back to the underlying automation. So if we look at volume here, I'll make a quick little volume move. Okay, and when I let go of the fader, it auto matches back based on the time set in the mixing preferences, you will see auto match time down here at the bottom. 250 milliseconds is the default. That's a good general purpose time for auto match because you really want it to very quickly go up and down. So let's say I see this waveform coming. By the way, this is a great opportunity to go into continuous scrolling. Okay, so I can see that there's a peak on this waveform and I need to duck under it, but then I wanna get back up to my nominal gain value pretty quickly. So with touch, I can do this. So I'm gonna come down and then I wanna be able to let go. You see that? And have it pop back up. So 250 is a good number. That default number is a good number for dialogue mixing and um, or mixing like a vocal or something like that in like a, rock, in a in a music context. Okay, so that's touch. Doesn't write automation unless you touch the control. And then when you let go, it times out and it auto matches back based on the auto match time. So the opposite of that is right. Let's say I had these three clips of dialogue and I knew these are all too loud. I want to bring the fader down 10 dB. So what I'm going to do is right now, uh, you can't see me doing it, but I just brought the fader down 10 dB. And when I hit play, it's going to blast through here and overwrite all of the previous automation. And it's going to stay at that fader level that I put it at. I could make it even, I could change it again. It'll continue writing at that level until I either stop the transport or I manually auto match it, which we'll talk about in a bit. Then when I stop, look, it's instantly snaps back. It goes out of right and it instantly snaps back to whatever the previous automation value was. Okay, so right is the opposite of touch. It's always writing at whatever value the control happens to be at. It'll blow out any existing automation that you have. Here's what's dangerous about right. You, you generally don't want to use right. If we go to the automation window, so window automation, and you'll see what types of automation are right enabled. Now, this is, this is all real-time writing. Touch, latch, touch, latch, right. Doesn't matter which one you're in. These are the types of controls that are eligible to write automation. When you're in touch, you could potentially write these, but you have to touch those controls to, in order to write them. So even though I have, uh, pan, for example, enabled for automation because I didn't touch the pan control during the pass of touch automation, I did not write any new pan automation. Here's where this is a problem. When you're in write mode, all of these types of parameters are always writing. So what does that mean? When I did this pass right here in write, Unbeknownst to me, well, I knew it, but what you might not know is that I also wrote whatever the pan value was, that also got written, right? Whatever the um, reverb send level was, that also got written. All of those values, everything that was enabled in the automation window was written as automation for that entire duration of me playing back in auto write. So I think you can see here that write is almost like shuffle. Like you do not want to be in write unless you have a very good reason to be in write. And if you're going to use write, you definitely want to look at the automation window and turn off everything that you don't want to write. So when you get into more advanced automation, especially on control services, you're going to want to always have this window open just so you can check and see what's going on. Um, unless you plan to never use write, which is not a terrible idea. Um, and if you're never going to use write, you could have all these on, makes no difference. The in-between mode, which is really the most powerful mode in Pro Tools, is latch. It starts off in touch, meaning no automation is written unless you touch a control. 
but then it finishes like right. So the control that you did touch will continue to write its value until you stop the transport or manually auto match. So if I want to do a pass through this section, right, I can play through these moves without, without modifying them, then grab the fader, move it to a new value, let go, and it will stay there. But you are finishing in right in the sense that that will blow through any existing automation. Okay, so it starts like touch, finishes like right. Touch latch, it puts the faders into touch and it puts all of the knob controllers into latch. So why do we care about that? Well, when you're moving a pan control, right, chances are you want it to stay where you leave it and not auto match back to center or whatever. But on faders, chances are if when you let go of the fader, it, it, you do want it to go back to whatever the nominal value is. Okay, so note when I move the pan, it stays. But when I move the fader, it auto matches back. So a lot of times with pan, you'll adjust it for a line of dialogue or a few lines of dialogue, or maybe for a whole scene, the pan will just stay center or will stay left or will stay right. So that's a, that's a nice one for a lot of different mixing scenarios.